five is in the right tail and five percent is in the left tail. So the question is, what t value? Now, our t tables, our t tables, okay, the t tables that we that we concentrate on, okay, have degrees of freedom listed down the first column, and it has the area in the tail, the area in the right tail, okay. Okay, listed across this particular this particular row. Now the amount of area in the right tail is five percent, or it's zero point zero five. So we have zero point zero five is the area in the right tail. Now we have tables that give us these particular critical values for the amount of area that we've put in the right tail. But just keep in mind that our degrees of freedom for a t test, our degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. So in our case, it's equal to 64. So we're looking for the column 64, sorry, down the row 64 and under the column 0 0.05 because we have 5% of the area in the right tail. So the appropriate T value, when I go to my T distribution tables, okay, here's my T distribution tables, okay. Uh, now I'm looking for degrees of freedom of 64. Hmm. I have 60 and 70, okay, uh, the area in the right tail, so it's, it's, it's one of these values on these, uh, it's one of these values on these particular rows, it's between 60 and 70, uh, but we have the amount of area that we need in the right tail is 0 0.05, so the value that I'm looking for is either 1.671 or 1.667, it's somewhere between them two values, if that makes sense. And what we'll do is we'll just take, we'll just take the value that's closest to the degrees of freedom, and 60 is closest to 60. So we're just going to take 1.671 as our as our critical value or as our as the demarcation point for five percent of the area being in the right tail. So this is our appropriate t value. So this is the t value here that we require. So now we have all the information. So now we can construct a 90% confidence interval. So let's substitute in our values. So on the right hand side here, we're going to have 55,000 euros. 55,000 euros minus the T value that's associated with this particular interval. It's it's 1.671 and that needs to be multiplied by the standard deviation which is 15,000 okay all over the square root of the sample size which is all over the square root of the sample size which is 65 and we know that the population mean is bigger than that particular value but it's also less than another value and the value that's going to be less than is the sample mean which is 55,000 euros okay plus 1.671 times 15,000 over the square root of 65. Okay, 15,000 over the square root of 65, the sample size. So if we want to do that particular calculation, uh, well, hopefully we can actually see that this term here is the same as this term over here. So what we'll do is we'll just do this calculation here, which is, it's let's do what's inside the brackets first. We just go to mode zero. So if I do what's inside the brackets first, Maybe can you see this over here? Maybe better. Okay, it's fifteen thousand divided by the square root of sixty-five gives us a value, and I want to multiply that by one point six seven one my t statistic to give me a value of three thousand one hundred and eight point nine three or three thousand one hundred and nine euros. So this becomes this side becomes it should be fifty-five thousand euros minus three thousand. 109 euros must be less than the population mean, which must be less than this value here, 55,000 euros plus, or oh, 55,000 plus this particular factor, which is 3,109, okay? So when we take that away, we have 55,000 euros minus 3,109 gives us a value of 51,891, must be less than mu, must be less than, when we add it on here, we get 58,109, okay? And this is the interval. So what we're saying is this, is that we're 90% confident, okay, if you think about this from an interval perspective, okay, the true population value, the true population average is somewhere along this particular, this particular, this particular continuum. And what we're saying is that 51,891 and between 58,109, that we're 90% 90, 90 confident that the true population mu is in there, 90% confident. But let's just keep in mind that we could be wrong, and it could actually be outside of that interval, but it should only occur outside that interval 10% of the time, okay? That's not to say that when we take, when we when we randomly select, okay, that's not to say that the population mean 
uh, isn't out there okay it could be okay but what we're saying is through this particular theory is that we're 90 percent confident that the population mean is bounded below by 51,891 and above by 58 sorry 51,891 and above by 58,109 okay so guys that's how we calculate confidence intervals the key thing to keep in mind is that we have two formulas okay uh, the first formula is where we know the population standard deviation okay okay and I've got a set of videos that, that work that formula. And then the second formula is where we use a t-statistic, okay, because the population standard deviation is unknown and we have to rely upon the t-distribution. Okay, guys, once again, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video was in some way intuitive. And more importantly, I hope that it was helpful for you. And thank you for watching.